Hello crafty friends, today I'm working in my small art journal. For a long time I've been wanting to do a magazine face with a flower crown that I've seen um, a few artists do. So today I'm going to give it a go. I haven't really planned anything and I haven't done this before. So you're seeing it for the first time as I'm creating it. So as I page through magazines, I just tear out the pages that I've got um, girls faces on that I like. This one, um, I like it because it's the right size for my journal and I like that her face is slightly turned so it'll allow for more flowers on the top of her head. So I'm just going to cut it out and then stick it into my art journal. I'm going to use Mod Podge to paste it down but you could also use craft glue or a glue stick. Once I've put the Mod Podge down on the page and I put the magazine face on the top i'm just going to cover it again with mod podge this is just to waterproof it so that when and if i add color on top it won't buckle and tear note to self use a bone folder to press out any air bubbles once you've placed the magazine picture down before you apply the top layer of mod podge rookie mistake just trimming off the excess I'm using some white gesso and my finger just on the picture edge just to blend it into the background. In the end of this I'll actually cover everything so this um, step wasn't really required but because I wasn't sure what I was going to be doing at the beginning I sort of did this to allow for any kind of painting or for additional texture. The flowers that I'm going to use today are going to be fussy cut from these printouts. These printouts are available from Digital Collage Club. I'll put a link below with some discounts if you make a purchase. Some of these are on backgrounds like a postcard, which doesn't matter. I'm just going to cut out the flowers that I like. I'm going to fussy cut out more than I need just so that I can play around with positioning. Once they're all cut out, I'm going to start placing them on her head like a crown and just moving them around until I find how, um, a way that they're balanced and that they look good. I've used quite a few flowers and I made it quite big, but it is the focal point of the page. So I wanted lots of flowers with lots of colors and textures. Once I'm happy with all the positioning, I'm going to go underneath each one with a paintbrush and some Mod Podge. You could also use craft glue and just stick them all down. I'm also going to again cover the top of them with Mod Podge because I'm going to probably add some color. Once my flowers are all stuck down and really dry, I'm going to add some texture with a stencil. I'm going to use this mixed media paste. It's a two-in-one gesso and modeling paste in white, and it's available from Little Birdie Crafts. I'll put a link to their website below, and there's also a discount if you make a purchase. The stencil is from Maremi's Small Art. I will put a link for that too. So I'm applying the stenciling just around the edges around the flowers. I'm not covering the whole area. I am overlapping on some of the flowers, but I'm sort of just trying to make an extension of the flowers. It will help the flowers sort of blend into the background so they're not just so stark and just stuck down. Once it's dry, I'm going to add a layer of clear gesso with my paintbrush over the stencil and some of the background paper. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to add some water down acrylic. I'm going to add quite a bit of water. And if I don't waterproof the book pages, they're going to become really, really soggy and they won't look really good. So the clear gesso just allows a base for the acrylics to adhere to. 
I've gone through my paints and taken all the greens and neutral tones. I'm using um, watercolors in the tube and some acrylic paints. And I'm just going to apply a little bit into my palette and then just mix and match and use a watered effect around over the textured uh, areas that I've just created. The trick is to use quite a lot of water. The water effect will run in between the ridges of the textured area, which give it a really nice finish. I would really love if you subscribe to my channel. Also hit the little notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload new content. I'm continuing adding my green paint. I'm using different tones of green just to give it some interest. And as you can see, I've got my little spray bottle of water and I'm using that quite a bit. That'll give it the watered effect and it'll allow the colors to blend and run down in between the grooves of the texture paste. To add a little bit of contrast and boldness, I'm using this bright blue and I'm just putting it on the top of her eyelid as if it's an eyeshadow. I'm leaving it quite bold because I like the way it um, stands out. And to balance out the blue, I'm going to add a little bit in her braid that's on the side. I'm just putting tiny little dots as if it's sort of been um, painted on or designed into the hair. When all the blue is dry on her eye, I'm taking a black fine liner and I'm just emphasizing the eyelashes just to make it look more like a cat eye and to make it stand out a bit. I wonder how many times I can say the word contrast in a video. I'm going to add some more contrast using white acrylic paint. I'm going to make some designs just on her forehead and over her eyebrows. I really hope you enjoyed this video and were inspired to create your own magazine art. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.